Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Angie. I am a almost 33 year old uh, classroom teacher based in Melbourne, Australia. And in these types of videos, I tell you my income for the month. I tell you my like money goals, any savings goals that I might have for that particular month, as well as any foreseeable like spending, as well as all of my savings accounts. I call them sinking funds. I have many of them. So I'll tell you exactly what they're for, how much I put towards them, and then anything extra, what I would do with that extra money. So I actually haven't done one of these for months. And the reason for that is because I didn't have like any money to budget at all. For the past two years, I was doing casual relief teaching or like substitute teaching. If you're from I think a lot of other countries that don't call it casual relief teaching. So I wasn't guaranteed work every single day. And last year the work was a little bit slower. I did work for a whole term at one stage, but other than that, it was very, very stagnant. I wasn't earning as much money as what I was the previous year. And then like the years before that. So my income, I just found that my like budget with me videos weren't very exciting because they were just kind of all over the place. And a lot of the time I wasn't, earning enough money to make the video actually like interesting or to show you what I was doing with that money because it basically went straight towards bills. Last year I lost a lot of money as well um, just based on our living situation. We did have a very expensive house with a huge mortgage. So this year it should hopefully be a little bit more interesting because we are in a rental. So we are no longer homeowners which is actually it's a really nice financial burden not to have even though it's like the dream to have your own home. Um, Lewis and I are feeling very free at the moment. We've got a little bit of extra money that we can play with because we no longer have to pay for those home ownership bills that come along with owning a home. I'm gonna be putting that money to good use this year as well. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna be doing with that too. But otherwise, let's just jump straight into it. So I started my full-time job off in January or like the very end of January, I think it was like January 29th or something like that. And so, so far through the year, I have received two pays and they're the same every single fortnight apart from like, so I get a pay increase every six months from the Department of Education. And I think it's like one or 2%, like it's not crazy, but every dollar obviously counts. And because I'm a, I am a year more experienced, the pay goes up the more experienced that you are up until I think like 10, 11 or 12 years, like there's a cap on which you can earn, but I'm earning pretty good money now, which I'm really happy with, which means that I obviously have a lot more to play with. What I use to create my budget is it's really simple. I don't have like crazy Excel spreadsheets or anything like that. I just find that it's really overwhelming and the simpler, the better for me because it's easy to follow and I'll stick to my actual budgeting if it's nice and simple for me. The I use to two things, well, three things. I use, The first one that I use is a website called Every Dollar. It calculates everything for you. So you put in your income, your fixed expenses, your variable expenses, and then anything else that you might wanna add. I then use a um, app called Up Banking, which is like, it's an online bank, but you can create all of these sinking funds that you can allot to like a certain thing, whether it be like a new bike or for Christmas, and you can like call it whatever you want and you can have however many sinking funds that you wish. And then I use WeMoney as well to track across all of my banks. So how much money is coming in, going out, and then it categorizes it all as well. So. Those are the three financial apps and websites that I use to track and budget all of my money. The first one that we're gonna start off with is over on Every Dollar. It is owned by Dave Ramsey, so it might be a bit controversial. Some people are not big fans of him, but I think his website's actually really good. I have no issue with using it. I don't follow his financial philosophies or his beliefs, but his website's pretty good. It's kind of like idiot proof, so. <laughs> that's kind of why I use it because it's nice and simple. So we're going to first start off with um, my income. So I can kind of delete some of these things now. The only problem with his website is that sometimes it's a little like hard to delete stuff. I can't quite figure out how to delete some things. Um, the first thing I'm going to, well, I'm not going to delete, but I'm going to talk about it is AdSense. I haven't been earning any money from YouTube for a couple of months now, purely for the fact that I haven't been uploading. So I am going to keep it, but for planned 
let's be realistic. Let's say that we're going to earn $30 from YouTube. I'm only just starting to get back into it. I know a lot of my followers have probably left and they're not watching anymore because, you know, I know that when someone on like YouTube or Instagram stops uploading, you kind of lose interest and you move on. So I'm hoping that the $50 is going to come from new people, but I'm also really hopeful that it's going to come from returned watchers or viewers as well. So teaching private, we're not going to call it that anymore. That was when I was teaching privately through specific schools. We're just going to call it teaching now. And so for the whole month, we're going to put in our new income. Every fortnight I earn $2,340. So all of this is after tax and after my hex debt. So like my student debt has come out. So times that by two, because I get roughly two pays per month is going to come out to 4,680 dollars per month, which like if you are watching me for the last couple of years when I was doing casual relief teaching, that is like a huge amount in comparison to what I was earning. Really happy with that. 4,680 plus like $50 worth of AdSense. It's better than nothing. Um, so that gives me a monthly total of $4,730 to play with. Then we come down to Spotify. Now, a lot of these have actually increased in price. So Spotify, I believe is around $21 a month now. And Stan, I think has gone up to around 18 ish. My phone is still the same, which is really nice. So I've got Spotify, Stan, and my phone that I pay for every single month. I know exactly how much is coming out of that. Uh, moving down here to housing, which is like mortgage and rent. You can probably see this eye watering amount here. That's not even what I was paying. I was paying around $2,000 a month just for my portion of our mortgage, which is just absolutely absurd. So our rent is a lot cheaper now. Um, our overall rental in, uh, like amount for the month is I think 3,040. However, to get this rental, we actually offered six months in advance, which I think gave us a really nice like head start, I think to like other applicants because like they, the landlord obviously knows that we can afford the rental property and that we wanted it so much that we were willing to offer six months ahead of time. So for this month of March, I actually don't owe any rent because I've already paid it up until I think the end of June. So the first rental amount that'll have to come out is in, I think it's in July, around July 1st or something like that. And it is a lot cheaper than our previous mortgage. So that was about $6,000 a month in total, which like, I just actually cannot believe that we were paying that $6,000 a month for a house. Like if any of you are paying that, like I, you like, it's fine. It's just not something that was in our vision anymore. Like it just wasn't something that we wanted. We just thought it was too expensive for us. We didn't need something that expensive. So it's nice to have our like housing amount be pretty much 50% because then we can use that money towards other things. So I'm going to put this at zero, which is so nice. And we're going to take off mortgage because we don't own a home anymore. We are back to being renters. Bills um, is still 320. So we put in 160 every fortnight for water, gas, and electricity. And we haven't got any bills for this place yet. So that might increase, it might decrease. We've also got split, split systems all around the house and I'm not sure how expensive they are to run. We don't have them on all the time apart from when we sleep. So upstairs in our bedroom, we have that split system on from around 10 p.m. till 7 a.m. So I don't know, I'm a little bit scared for the electricity bill. If the electricity bill is ridiculously expensive, obviously we'll keep, we'll obviously not have the aircon on at nighttime and we'll just suck it up, but we'll see how we go. Let's get rid of the stager. We don't need that anymore. So we've got bills. Let's put in here food. I thought I did have a food um, thing. Oh, I do. I'm actually going to delete food. I've got it down below. This is how long it's been since I've actually properly done a full budget. So rent is zero, bills is 320, petrol. So because I now live about 10 minutes from my school, I'm only paying around like $100 for petrol a month now. 
previously it was 50 minutes from my house to my school so if I was going there every day my petrol was just it was even more than $200 a month but I think I was just trying to like hope that it wasn't going to be that expensive so petrol is around $100 a month that depends on if I then travel like towards the city or towards like down to the wineries like obviously that's going to either be a little bit less or a little bit more but $100 is like the average. I'd say I probably am spending around $80 a month, but let's budget for $100 just in case. Groceries is $400. We haven't really gone to, like obviously groceries are way more expensive than what they were, but we kind of put in a lot more a couple of years ago and then whatever was left over we saved. Basically now we have like nothing left over to save. So the money is still like we don't need to add anything it's just that groceries are just getting expensive and we're not putting aside as much like leftover money anymore splurge money so because i'm earning so much more it means that i can kind of have more money to splurge i obviously don't want to be and do it ridiculously that i'm not saving a lot of money but i also want to have this year of being able to buy things without feeling super guilty or super scared to because of like how expensive our mortgage was previously. So I wanna be able to, we're calling it our rich life this year. So we wanna, and it's not about being rich, it's about spending money on things that are going to bring us joy and kind of make our life a little bit easier. That is, you know, if we want a bottle of wine, we're going to spend a little bit more and get a nicer bottle of wine because that's something that we like to do. You know, if we wanna go and go to the driving range, like we can pay for that on the weekend rather than just being like, oh, well, I don't have that much money left over from my job because I didn't earn enough. Like now we've actually got the money to kind of do that, which is bringing a little bit more joy into our life, which is nice. So splurges for the month, I think I've been giving myself, I used to give myself 150 per fortnight. So I think what I want to do is give double that. So I think I want to do around $300 a fortnight, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what we're doing for the weekends as well. Like we have been going out a lot more, which is so nice. Um, it's nice to be able to go out to dinner and drinks and have a bit of fun rather than just being stuck at home ordering takeaway. Um, so I'm going to say that for the month, I'm going to give myself $600 for splurge. I also do really want to start off start up reformer pilates probably not this week but maybe next week um, and they're around twenty dollars a class and i want to do it minimum two classes a week so um that's around eighty dollars uh a fortnight so 160 dollars a month i'm going to put aside towards pilates just to have like some sort of fitness in our lives like i feel like i've been putting a lot of like weight on my face or like I feel really inflamed because Lewis and I don't do a lot of exercise like I I hate the gym I find the gym super overwhelming and boring like it's just not something that I like to do whereas a Pilates class you're in there for 50 minutes it's not full sweat but you do get such a good whole body workout and then it's done like you're done for the day and you don't have to do anything else so that's the kind of exercise that I like I call it incidental exercise. You know, like if we go for a walk to go get lunch, you know, like that's a form of incidental exercise rather than like getting in the car and going to the gym and having to do like two hours at the gym. I don't want to do that. So yeah, that's Pilates. Health insurance is still the same. So $50, that was when I wasn't earning a lot. So it's actually $100 a month now. Car insurance is actually 84 a month, not 8,400. House insurance, delete it. We don't need it anymore. We don't own a home. We don't need house insurance. Oh, it's so nice to delete stuff. Car service is $84 a month. Car rego, 84. Christmas is 50. So we're doubling all of these. So then we can get really ahead in our sinking funds. Whereas previously I was doing it only just to like match the sinking funds, like to get just enough to pay the bills and buy birthday presents and buy Christmas presents. Whereas now I want to get ahead birthdays 50 so again we're doubling it clothes um i think we'll keep that the same i think we'll keep that 50 dollars a month i'm not like a huge spender i will say that the first couple of paychecks are really paychecks well, i'm not american but my first like pays that i'm getting i am wanting to splurge 
a lot more because I have been so restricted for so long that I haven't been able to like buy makeup and buy clothes and if I want to go and buy a candle like I can now just go and do that whereas before it was a very very well thought out thing to have to buy so I am still going to put a little bit of money towards like clothes and things just you know if I want to buy something it's there I can spend the money but yeah, like previously, I, I had to really, really think about it. Council rates, we can delete that. We, again, no longer homeowners, so we do not have to pay council rates anymore. Bye-bye to council rates. House decor, this house is actually, I had the house decor fund previous for my previous home because it was so big that we had to save up money to fill it because there were so many spaces. Whereas with this rental place, everything that we had from our house, which was not fully furnished, actually fits in and now this townhouse is fully furnished whereas our previous home that we owned was never like it never had a whole house of furniture and stuff because it was so stupid and big which i will talk more on that um in another video i just yeah lewis and i made some very interesting financial decisions a couple of years ago so yeah we will delete that because we no longer need much house decor and if we did it's like one thing like a console table for the front door to put our keys and shoes under like that's probably all that we need apart from like a couple of frames of artwork otherwise we're done like we don't need to save any more money for house decor okay so let's talk about savings and investing so as you can see i have put uh, down the bottom here in investments that I have put $1,000 towards investing. That's how much I would like to invest per month this year. So it said that I had $2,579 left over to budget. My living, expensive, my living expenses this year is going to be a lot less than what I had been previously. So this is the month for me to re rebuild up my savings and to try and like get ahead especially with investing and like savings as well. So every month I would like to put a thousand dollars towards some ETFs that I already previously have, but I obviously want to build them up and, you know, make it a little bit more bulky, especially, you know, as I'm getting older, I don't want to hopefully have to work until I am 65. I would like to try and retire a little bit earlier or at least be able to go part-time and have a little bit of money on the side. So that means I have $1,579 left over to save, which I am hopefully going to be able to do that. If I say like 1,500 um, left or like to save per month and a month has already gone. So let's times that by 11. I should hopefully be able to save $16,500. Now saying that though, we are planning on going away on like, you know, a couple of weekend trips, maybe a couple of like smaller holidays. We're not doing anything massive, like a month in Bali, like what we've previously done. We're going, I think for some smaller little trips. Let's hope, uh, let's aim for like a savings of around $10,000 and then investing around $11,000 as well, which I think is like $20,000 $20, to put towards my financial future, I think is, something to be really really proud of i also which i don't know if i mentioned previously i've also started a little baby fund for my sister who is pregnant and she is due in around seven and a half weeks she corrected me this morning because apparently i said in a previous video that she's due in a couple of weeks and seven and a half is not a couple um but every four sorry every fortnight so every pay i'm going to be putting fifty dollars away into a little baby fund for her or for her or her babies because she is doing it as a single mum. if she needs any like nappies and she you know can't maybe afford it that month or if she needs money for something or you know if we're all going out for dinner and she wants to get a babysitter and wants to pay a babysitter like that money's there for whatever she wants i don't actually think i've told her about this I mean, if i haven't erin i'm doing a little baby fund for you putting 50 dollars a fortnight away into your little baby fund so if you want anything and there's money in there you can have it it's yours um obviously for the baby or like to pay mortgage or bills or whatever so yeah that's a hundred dollars a month putting in towards a little baby fund for her so i thought that was something a little bit nice considering i can af can afford to do it now but yeah that's pretty much it for 
this video. I think next next time I think I might show you all of my savings accounts, show you all of my sinking funds with how much I have in them at the moment, but I just need to set that up on my laptop so then it looks a little bit nicer. But yeah, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. If you have any questions um, about like our house, our mortgage, like any of the income that I've got, any of the savings that I've got, please make sure that you do leave them down below and I will reply as quickly as I can. And I will see you sometime in a video in the future. See ya.